And, you know, when these guys show up, I just want to be able to go within days of them arriving, um, give them a good little shakedown cruise and get north, get going. So my friend in Grenada, Ike, suggested that I make a brick house operating manual, so I went to work to do that. So you ask, why an operating manual? Well, every boat has a lot of fine nuances, and instead of just telling people how to do things and hoping that they remember, um, I put it all down in an operating manual so that they could read it ahead of time before they got here, absorb a few things slowly, have it for while they're here and they have a question they feel silly about asking it. I'd rather have the answer right there for them so that they can just refer to it. Some people are visual learners. Others learn by listening. So I kind of did it from a few different angles to, you know, hope that as many things about operating Brick House would be absorbed by the most number of people by the time they already got here or shortly thereafter. Um, it was also you know, a lot of times with Michael, I've always felt like I was telling him how to do things and what had what needed to happen. And I just wanted to have it down in writing and not have to babysit each person about, you know, do it this way, do it that way. They would already know from reading and going over the manual. It also gave me an organized way to show people the boat uh, once they did arrive. Um, you know, I had one guy, won't well, name names, but I had one guy who refused to read the thing before he got here and refused to listen to me once he got here, you know, about anything to do with operating the boat because he felt like he knew it all. I won't say which one that was. And then you have other people that read the manual and they, you know, they really knew the boat when they got here and they really knew what I wanted and I didn't, you know, have to micromanage quite as much. But you know what? If I need to micromanage, I will micromanage because it's my boat and if something breaks because I didn't tell you or you didn't read it, it's my fault. So I'm gonna make sure you know it. I made sure everybody knew it. Much to some people's dismay. The operating manual welcomes you to Brick House, tells you to keep your hands off the captain, how to keep things dry in your bunk, closing windows, what to do when you're sailing, how to start the engine in detail, how to stop the engine in detail, using the chart plotter, steering, fuel, using the anchor up and down, Using the water system, how to use the head properly, how to use the showers, keeping the galley clean, keeping it orderly, how to work with other people in the galley, how to wash the dishes using the energy, dinghy, dinghy use, dinghy rights, what to do with the dinghy when you're, you are using it, when the d captain's been trusting you to it, the security of the dinghy. And much, much <laughs> But we are talking about how difficult so, it is to bring people onto your boat. It's not full immersion, but it's a pretty sudden, significant immersion, right? You go from one to three oh in a day. Child, That's a big jump. And, and it's not somebody that you know and it's not you know their quirks. And, you know, even when it's my family coming, I know, like I know where we're going to go wrong. Yeah. Like if I moved my sister's shit right. from her spot, right. there right. will be issues. Right. right, right, right. Like I should be putting my stuff over here and you should be putting your stuff in your bed and it shouldn't, like we shouldn't leave our stuff everywhere because like, you know, for example, like, you know, that water bottle right there, which is mine. If the boat starts rocking, I'm going to move it because otherwise it's going to fall. And I'm going to put it someplace and then, or you're going to see that it's rocking and you're going to put it someplace. And then I'm going to be like, where's my water bottle? Exactly. But if you put it safe in your cabin and you put it away, then you know whatever you're looking for that's yours is in your space. Or the only way it's going to get moved is if we need to get in your you know, cabin to get something out of the closet or we need to get under your bed to get something, you know, whatever. By the way, what is under my bed? Everything. Okay. <laughs> all of this, all kinds of spare parts and like the batteries are under there, like tons of spare parts and all the electrical tools and crimps and all kinds of stuff like that. I mean, you should explore what's under your bed because I mean, that might be a good thing, good way to do it. Like you explore what's in your closets. So when I say, Suzanne, in your bedroom, there's this, can you get this? Or under your bed, I need the electric crimps. Can you get them? And you know right where they are. And then I don't have to go into your room to find them. I don't have to go into your room to find them. You guys are kind of like familiar with what's in your We're room. We're in charge of our rooms. In charge of your rooms and in charge of everything in your rooms, the things you don't even know that are in your rooms. <laughs> Still in charge. Is there, a, is there a space under my bar? Um, under, not so much. 
there's just chain under your ass. But it's it's the la you know the port side of the boat, all those closets. If you get familiar, what's in what's in there? Yeah. Um, Is it mostly tools? And it's mostly the stuff? tools are behind here, uh, like the power tools. Yeah. And then other tools and spare parts and bits and nuts and bolts. So what would your wife say? Are my quirks? Yeah. I don't think I want to even know. <laughs> Come on, what would she tell us? What does she bitch you about like, on a regular basis? <laughs> you know, my wife's used to my quirks, and that's the thing, right? Mm. So you're not used to my quirks, I'm not used to yours. Mm. And that's the process, right? Like yeah. once you get used to, once you adjust to somebody's quirks, it's okay. Then they're not quirks anymore. Then they're just, then they're just the person, right? Yeah, yeah. Like what are things like that people can do on a boat that would kind of like, uh, like make you grit your teeth a little bit? I just, I'm, I'm about just being kind, you know. And if people aren't kind, and and you know, then that that rubs me the wrong way. Yeah. Because why wouldn't you be, you know, yeah. especially on a boat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Sometimes yeah. we have to have be nice to everybody day on the boat. <laughs> <laughs> That's the day where if you need that thing and it's on the other side of that person, mm -hmm. can you say, could you please, if you can find the time, please hand me that screwdriver. <laughs> yeah, I don't need that much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally fine with handing the damn screwdriver. <laughs> now, please. I know, it's kind of like when you walk by here. Like, that's my, this is like my usual spot, right, where you are, Rick? Yeah. And I have my feet on the mat. And people are going up and down the aisle. And it's like, excuse me. Excuse me. Yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> excuse me. Excuse me. Please frickin' get out of my way now. <laughs> well, and that's a good point, because I think something that we should think about or consider in our you know interactions is that um say say what say what you want don't let stuff um fester, build up. fester. Yeah. that's that's the word don't let it fester and say it so that it gets out and someone can make an adjustment before it becomes an issue right or, or like or if, whatever, if, you, know, if you didn't right. want my feet on, on the mast right yeah. here yeah you'd right. just be like you know please don't do that right and then i won't do it right. um but if you don't say anything and then i've done it 10 times and now you're just like that's you know what I mean? <laughs> I do that. He's all doing the time. it again. That, that doesn't mean don't tell me negative stuff. You know that yeah. that means just communicate. You yeah. know, yeah, yeah. we gotta communicate if something's irking because this is a small space, three yeah. people. We yeah. can't do a lot of irking. You gotta get it out and get it get yeah. past it. Yeah. And you have to have kind of um, a shell. Like you have to understand that that might help, mm -hmm. and not. Yeah. Nope. Can't be too sensitive. Like, oh, you hurt my feelings when you did that, right? Yeah. Like, that's what you're saying, right? Like, don't do Like, that. we don't have to have therapy about it, right? <laughs> well, you know what I mean, I want you right? To be in this so, we don't have to talk it to death, you mean? Just like. Right. Yeah. It's like, you shouldn't stand there, you're in my way. And then it's done. Perks. Yeah. Like, what pisses you off on a boat? What pisses off Suzanne? I don't think it's something that pisses me off, but what makes me irritable about living on a boat is not being able to find things. You can never find your stuff. Yeah. And mm -hmm. when someone else oh, moves your stuff, mm -hmm. that can be annoying. But it's more, it's not about things that people do, it's about living in the space and the quirks involved in living in that small space. I yeah, yeah. What are you doing? We're gonna have a kappa. What's a kappa? Is that a boss thing? Kappas? No, a kappa's a thing we Is do. Is that the kappa right there? It's a sailing thing. That's the it's kappa. It's definitely a sailing thing. Okay. We have a little bit. So what are we at having? At the end here? of the day, what and we're having three little cups of rum. And who got the extra? And we're gonna just see how the day went and if we can and do something better. Is the rum gonna tell us this? It is. It, loosens up your mind and it tells you that this is the end of the day and it's all going to be new tomorrow and is it going to be better or worse <laughs> it's always going to be better every day it's going to be better i think that <laughs> if it's not we have another capper and we start again okay not a kappa but a capper <laughs> a kappa 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 Suzanne is obviously used to living in very small spaces. This is her space in the bow, half of which is taken up by a cabinet. Um, and 
she makes good use of all of her space. Um, she has things hanging by little, um, little like wire ties and Velcro straps and. I don't know if we need to get into any of those cabinets. I don't know how the hell we'll find anything or get past her stuff, but she's got it under control. And even when offered a bigger space in the back when we had a change of crew, she wanted to stay here. Glutton for punishment, I guess. But at least it's a nice, new, comfortable cushion. But if we were dragging, I'm not the one I would have called. <laughs> Rebecca! <laughs> Captain, we go! We're dragging! I'm going back to bed now. I did my part. Awesome at the helm, and you're awesome at everything else. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. Thank you. Oh my God, another paper towel down the drain. Five cents more. Well, paper towel, we like could set up a kitty in the kitchen. <laughs> Yeah, we could put a nickel at it. Like Crossing the Pacific, I guess I got very sensitive about paper towel the use. They're so expensive and so hard to replace. And they're pretty expensive here, too, but no, really these guys use them like it's toilet paper. I know. You have certain certain items that are your buttons, though, and we have to be cognizant of that. That's why uh, we're going to buy our own. <laughs> and we're going to put our names on them. I see about six rolls over there. I'm not too worried about it. <laughs> God, I should have hidden them. I knew I should have hidden them. <laughs> just give her, give her some, throw some cash at it. Yeah, just okay, 50 bucks a roll will do the trick. <laughs> <laughs> throw some cash at it, it'll be fine. Oh yeah, cash works. I like cash. Yep, I hate any kind of waste. What you making? Well, <laughs> this is called, let's use up the pita bread and make garlic peanut pita bread. <laughs> it last it's minute. garlic and butter naan, isn't it? Oh, God. Maybe. Yeah, that, that, that sounds good. Yeah, nice Indian food. and like, But on the table, we have nice Italian food. Right. There we go. Ready for dinner. You know, I still have to say, this woman said she only cooks macaroni and cheese. That's what she I She is apparently like lying. To when I'm alone, but you guys just slept out. It's I did. We did. Okay, What'd you say? The hell with gardening. I'm gonna become crew with the famous YouTubers. The famous are not so rich. YouTubers. Cleaning their skills. Hear that? Services are available here. I've already here. been through a couple of cupboards, I gotta say. Just contact Brick House <laughs> if you want a great maid. <laughs> References available. <laughs> I'm getting the stuff from Suriname out of your oven. I never even went to Suriname, so oh. that's quite a feat, Palau. girl. <laughs> Palau, that was eight years ago. <laughs> Thanks. See how clean that one is? That... That's amazing. Don't look at the bottom. I'm not done. Now I'm going to soak this if it'll fit. Oh, I have to do it this way. I should have put this in the frying pan. So, this is the way I clean up um, pots and pans at home when my boys can't, don't understand why I want them to be clean on the bottom. I put in boiling water, baking soda and vinegar and let it sit and it helps get the crust off. That's just rust, I think. Uh, there's food in there. Oh, it's a science experiment. <laughs> it really is. Mount Pele. Ooh, stinky, um, stinky. I'm gonna let that soak a little bit and hopefully it'll get the crust off here. You were so worried about it, I know. And I wondered where all my water went. Now That's I salt water. Oh. I figured as long as it's baking soda, she can always get salt water. Mm -hmm. That's what I love about this girl. She knows how to conserve water, unlike some. I was trained well. In today's episode, I'm sailing with the famous and not so rich. We clean Rebecca Childress's oven, stove, top. Look at that. Oh, it's amazing. 
It's amazing. I'm going to start a whole new career. Unfortunately, about, I'm sure I have many before is of how bad it was. Look at that. Shiny. Shiny. So clean. That's what this girl can do for you. I'm, it drives me crazy that I can't get underneath and in the back of it, but we're not going to take So no, suddenly one I day, go? everything was yet. ready. The weather was right. And we dropped the mooring ball and we headed off saying goodbye to our Tell friends on the way out. Tell me you're scared. such a big big day I can't tell you the anxiety but the joy too I'm about to finish tell this me you're nervous you say you're afraid I wish you could see that yeah that's her captain talk I think you're brave Saying goodbye to Michael a few months ago, and now saying goodbye to his boat. Wow, well, that uh, was a little bit difficult. Thank you. Wherever you're going, I'm going to. I'll follow. really wanted to say goodbye to Ike, but we never really got to say goodbye despite all the help that he gave me getting my boat ready and no. um, just helping me become a captain. Thanks for that, Ike. See you around. Grenada's really been a lovely, lovely place for me to recollect my thoughts and get ready for this next chapter in my life, becoming captain of Brick House. People were so forgiving and so beautiful and so kind and so honest. A lot of good people in Grenada. I'll miss her so much and I probably could have settled here for quite a while, but like I said before, I'll never finish my circumnavigation if I stay here in the Caribbean, so gotta get a move on and so getting a move on is what we're doing and we're sailing away life on a boat is pretty grand <laughs> uh, it's a pretty slow start nice flat seas little sailboat race going out there in the we didn't really have enough wind to sail very quickly, and we did not make it to Karakou. We just made it up the coast of Grenada. So that's where we had Thanksgiving at. Did you okay. What are we eating for Thanksgiving tonight, guys? I'm having bean burritos. Bean don't, burritos. Tell, don't tell Steve. Steve, 
<laughs> We're having Mexican food for Thanksgiving. Oh my god. Is that alright, Steve? <laughs> and guess who made that? The cook on board. The cook of the day. <laughs> the cook of the day. She ate, she made like every meal today that we ate. Without her, we wouldn't even have water to drink. Nothing. Well, no, without this guy, we wouldn't have water to drink. <laughs> so the next day we wanted to get up to Kariku, the rest of the way to Kariku. And of course we had wind almost on our nose, or so it seemed. You're loving it. It is magnificent. And I just want to keep going. How much wind have we got? 25, 24 in there. Doing and six, how doing fast six, we going? Six knots. Cool. Maybe we should come down on the engine a little bit. Plenty of wind, about 25 knots, so to get there we decided we would motor sail at least oh some God, of the way alive. to keep um, from being pushed too much west with the west current that goes between Grenada and Kariku between the islands. Uh, so we did do uh, more motoring than I'd like to do, but at least we got there. The engine is... Since I had fairly inexperienced crew, I just went ahead and double reefed the mainsail that day knowing what the weather was going to be um, so that we wouldn't go too fast and get too out of control, but I think we were right about on the edge with 30 knots of wind like this. Um, we had a half reef jib and a double reef jib, as well as the stay sail, which was probably the Oh, I know. You know, with a double reefed main and a partially furled head sail and the stay sail, probably should have furled it a little bit more. Um, it was a little bit rambunctious of a sail and we were right on the edge, but I felt pretty safe, felt pretty good about so it. So we just kept going, uh, tried to make some good time while we could. Well, our heavy weather sailing is getting a test right out of Grenada. Just saw 30, but now it's down to 27, so it feels like a walk in the park now. <laughs> Going 6.1, we just let the main traveler down a bit. We just put the let the main sheet out a bit. Main sail's not thrilled, but at least we've slowed down a little bit. 29 knots, 30 knots. Yeah. So got the rail.
what we have up for sails is a double reefed mainsail. We put that up before we ever left Prickly Bay because we could always take it down, shake out a reef, leaf it up. It's always going to be okay no matter what. Uh, heck, I may leave it up for that way for the next 1,500 miles. We'll see what happens. And then we put up the stay sail, um, although there wasn't much wind, but it was right on the nose. But via predict wind observations, I got a report that the wind was 25 knots between Grenada and Kariku. And I said, let's just put up the stay sail so we're ready for it and so we have no fire drills. Sure enough, we got out there and we have 25 to 30 knots, if not more, and we're very glad to have this stay sail from Max Sails. It's always served us so well. Um, as time went on, we were slowing down a little bit, and with so much current pushing us westward between the islands, I wanted to plow through it as fast and as safely as possible. So I did run the motor to keep us closer to the wind, and I rolled out half the head sail to keep us going faster. Just wanted to get through that cut. And I really wanted these guys to enjoy their first sail on the house. too much time in Kariku. We just sort of uh, did a tour by dinghy and we went out for a meal and cleared out of customs and immigration and then we were ready to get a good night's sleep and go on to the next island. But here is where Suzanne finds out the bow is an even worse place to sleep. <laughs> 